Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well, and thank you all so much for joining me again to watch my whiskey wandering video. It's great to have you all be a part of this little, but still growing, whiskey and bourbon community, and it's been great to get a chance to have some discourse with you all in the comments as well. It's just really cool to see that there are still things like whiskey, for example, that are, well, pretty much one of the only things that people can agree on on the web are enjoyable, even if there is a difference of opinion about which ones you like best. But whichever whiskey it is that you do like, it is great to get to communicate with you in the comments, wherever you are. Now, today I am in Costco that is located in Los Angeles in the northern part in a city called Van Nuys, which is a bit of a high flute area of Los Angeles and where they typically have types of whiskeys that are on the higher side. In fact, a lot of the stuff they have just on the shelves, able to grab and kind of fondle, is what in most Costco's would be in the glass cases. Although, uh, I've never really been able to figure out why some are in the glass cases and why others are not, because they tend to be equally expensive, but it just doesn't seem to make any sense. So, in the video, I look at some of the more high-end whiskeys available at Costco, like the John Walker & Sons King George V, the Nika Coffee Grain Japanese Whiskey, and the good old staple scotch, the Glen Levitt 12, and do some basic price comparisons of all three. Now, before we get to it, if you like these little videos of me whiskey shopping, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when my newest videos get put up. So thanks again, and let's get down to it. All right, so for this first whiskey I'm going to talk about from this visit is the John Walker & Sons King George V. This whiskey is really interesting as what they are trying to do, and at the same time, a little bit confusing. First, because looking at the box, they're obviously very strong marketing geared towards the Asian market, which is understandable, especially considering the huge amounts of whiskeys that are being bought up in the East. But the reason to tray for this whiskey is meant to really harken back to the early 20th century style of Johnny Walker that's available in the UK, or I guess in Britain back then. So basically, the whiskey is meant to celebrate the reign of King George V from England, and basically from the 1910s to the 1930s, duplicate the types of whiskeys that they produced at that time frame. It uses whiskeys from distilleries, many of which are now closed, to blend whiskeys that reflect the type of Johnny Walker profile from that early 20th century time period. You can think about it, it's kind of a drink that maybe Neville Chamberlain or Winston Churchill or British officers at the Somme would have sipped on for king and country. So needless to say, after seeing why the bottle exists, it definitely excites me much more than when I just saw it on the aisle and saw the marketing that was obviously geared towards pandering to the most recent whiskey gross market. That being said, the King George V is not cheap. It is a very healthy price, even at Costco, at $499.99, which is still pretty good in comparison to the high and low street shelf price, which is at $767.99 on the high side and $699.99 on the low side. So that would make the average price on the street at $733.99. So if you do end up shelling out the big bucks for the Johnny Walker King George V at Costco, you'll still be able to get it for a savings of $234 or 31.88%. The ABV on the King George V is actually at 43%, which is a little bit higher than what you would get on a standard Johnny Walker Blue, which is normally only at 40%. So you get that extra alcohol, and the tasting notes are sort of interesting on this one too because it mentions things like winter spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, toffee, and a classic whiskey flavor. And of course, that all makes sense, especially considering that they are using whiskeys from back in the day to create a old-timey feel. That's the specific purpose of this one. Think of British bake sweets from the early 19th century or late 19th century and the early 20th century. Not necessarily something that we would all think of as delicious in today's world. Although, <laughs> you know what, I've tried those British digestive cookies with the chocolate on top. They are super duper addictive. All right, anyways, now the reviews on the King George V are at 90 points, which for whiskey that costs $500 in the base case scenario seems kind of low for a review. But I think it's because, one, the reviews that I looked at are mostly in English, so that could be one of the reasons, because it excludes a huge market of folks who drink this one. And also, uh, you know, just let's face it, it is cool an idea, in the idea format, to have a nostalgia drinking experience. Drinking something that is built to taste like an old school whiskey, but you know what? It may actually not be that good of a fit for today's whiskey drinkers, who had the benefit of whiskeys that have evolved to fit today's taste. I mean, try candies that were developed just in the 50s or 60s, but are still being sold today, and you'll see exactly what I mean. They don't exactly tickle your palate. 
So in conclusion, I think this one is going to be a pass for me just because it's expensive. It's cool, I love the idea about it, but there's probably just better ways to spend that $500 on other whiskeys that uh, maybe are not gonna be as much of a risk and also kind of fit what the current uh, in vogue styles of whiskeys are. But it is cool to see it out there in the wild. Now the second whiskey that I saw in this visit is basically a fraternal twin of one of my favorite whiskeys, my favorite Japanese whiskeys, <laughs> my favorite Japanese whiskey that's actually accessible, which is the Nika Coffee Grain. Now, I mean, I love the Nika Coffee Mall. It just has such a unique flavor that for whatever reason, it just is so pleasing to me. So that is what spurred me to pick up this Nika Coffee Grain, see if there is a big difference between the Nika Coffee Grain and the Nika Coffee Mall. This Nika Coffee Grain is an actual quote unquote Japanese whiskey distilled in Miyajiko Distillery in Japan it is made using a coffee still, which confusingly enough is not actually used to ever make coffee. It's just what they call it, I guess. Oh, actually, you know what? <laughs> I remember it's because the guy who patented it like in the 1830s, his last name actually was coffee, but with a Y, C-O-F-F-E-Y. <laughs> so there you go. Now the Nika has a Nash bill of 95% coin, which basically means that if it was made in the United States in the right county and barreled the right way, it would basically be considered bourbon. This iteration seems to be the most available in the US, especially after all the age statement whiskeys from Nika have basically up and just disappeared. But it is right in the middle of the Nika line that has whiskeys for pretty much all levels of drinkers and budgets. At Costco, though, we can see that this Nika coffee grain is priced at $59.99, but like many Japanese whiskeys on the shelf price, they can reach highway robbery levels of prices. But the high for the coffee grain that I had seen is at $109.99 on the high side, and on the low side, you can find it for $74.99. So that puts the average price at $92.49. Now, of course, there were some prices that I had seen in person as well as online that are way, way higher, but I think they are more outliers or scams or I'm not exactly sure about it. Um, so I tried to include just the prices that are sort of in the realistic ranges and I left those other ones out. But with these prices, if you do pick it up at Costco, it'll mean that you'll get a savings of $32.50 or 35.14%, which is sort of a steal. The ABV on the coffee grain is at 45%, which gives it a bit more kick than a lot of the traditional Japanese whiskeys. And the tasting notes mention things like dark sweets, grains, mesquite barbecue with a light flavor that is on the young side. The reviews on the Nikko coffee gave it a 85.75 points, but mentioned that it does lack complexity, but is pleasant. Sort of a sweet but shallow type. So in conclusion though, I bought it and I wanted to have it just as a juxtaposition to its counterpart of the Nika Coffee Malt, which I do thoroughly enjoy. And you know what, when you drink them side by side, you can definitely tell the difference between the two. But if you were to taste them separately, perhaps on different occasions, I don't think you'd be able to really tell the difference between the two. The last whiskey we're gonna talk about is a classic whiskey that's been around for basically forever and will likely probably be around forever and does a journeyman's job of whiskeying. This is the Glenlivet 12. Now the Glenlivet 12 is the quintessential scotch from the Glenlivet distillery that was established back in 1824 and has become the number one scotch malt brand in America and the number two selling scotch brand in the world. So there's definitely something to be said about that. The thing that is great about the Glenlivet that I like is that it is a basic drinker. It's something that you can reach for without ever having to think about how much you have left or is it going to be a waste to share with your non-whiskey drinking friends or is it going to cost an arm and a leg to replace and you don't have to worry about any of that because basically it's the Honda Civic of Scotch. It's always there, it's always in working condition and it is reasonably comfortable to get you where you need to go, although it may not do it with style. Now the price here at Costco is an easy going $28.99, while if you were to buy it on the street shelf price, you'd have a high and low of $54.99 on the high side and $39.99 on the low side. So that puts the average street shelf price at $47.49. So getting at Costco would save you $18.50 in cash uh, and a pretty good 38.96%. The ABV on it though is at 40%, so it is a bit underweight, but the tasting notes mention things like honey, vanilla, lemon cream pie, caramel apples with a clean, non-peated sugary flavor and a slight greasy note. The reviews for the Glen Levitt 12 are also above average at 85.75 points. It mentioned that it has more of a short burst of flavor that trickles off pretty quickly and that it's ideal for things like patio sipping, especially at the price. 
So in conclusion, I think that this is another one that's sort of doomed by its own ubiquity and approachable price. It's basically everywhere. And for whatever reason, I feel like it's something <laughs> that you'd probably get at an airport bar or an airport lounge. So in my mind, I just kind of think, why would you buy the cow when you can get the milk for free, especially at the LAX airport lounge at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday? All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wandering at Costco in Van Nuys. And thank you all so, so much again for watching the very end. I hope you really enjoyed this video, and if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get notified when my newest videos get put up. Also, don't forget, if you see a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And it might even be me. Have a great rest of your day. I'm out, and adios.